Hi everyone, my name is Nick and this video is the first in a short series meant to introduce you to the world of resin casting, specifically with the focus on making rubber tires. I want to focus this first video on the resins themselves because they are the key to this entire process and understanding what they are and how they work is going to help you out in the long run. Simply put, these resins are two-part mixtures that, when combined, kick off a chemical reaction that turns the liquid resin into a solid rubber. When you buy them, they come in two bottles labeled a Part A and a Part B. They're safe and easy to work with, and you can easily make your own custom rubber parts using 3D printed molds. And make no mistake, this is real rubber. It stretches like rubber, it squishes like rubber, and most importantly for making a tire, it's grippy just like rubber. So now that I've covered what this stuff is and what you can do with it, I want to quickly go over the two main things I look for when I want to buy a resin. The first is the Sure Hardness Rating, and the second is the Pot Life. The Sure Hardness Rating tells you how hard or soft the rubber is when it cures. These are the two resins I've worked with so far. One's a 40A and one's a 60A. So this Enduro Soft by Simple Resin is the 40A hardness. I would compare this rubber to a soft outdoor dirt compound like a J Concepts Green or a Proline M3, somewhere in that ballpark. The other resin I have here is the Smooth-On Vitaflex 60, which, as the name implies, is a 60A sure hardness. This rubber is more along the lines of something you use on a turf or a carpet track, similar to a Schumacher Yellow compound. Now, the pot life of the resin is how long you have to work with it after you combine the two. Uh, the clock starts ticking the instant you put the two parts into the same cup together. So in that time, you need to thoroughly mix the resin, degas it, transfer it to your syringe, and inject it into the mold. It doesn't sound like a lot of work, but each of those steps takes time, and you'll be surprised how much time they can eat up. So for that reason, I recommend getting a resin with a longer pot life, such as the Vitaflex resins. A longer pot life means you don't have to rush, it gives you more breathing room and more leeway for mistakes that might eat up time. For myself, I won't be using this simple resin in Durosoft after I use up what I have left here. I have ruined more parts using this stuff because of its short pot life, and in general I really wouldn't recommend it for new people either. So now I want to briefly talk about the effects of temperature on these resins. These resins are pretty sensitive to temperature and at colder temperatures, they get more viscous and they're harder to work with, and it also takes longer for them to cure. On the flip side, if you warm your resin up before using it, it becomes runnier and easier to work with, and you can also speed up the curing process by placing the resin in a heated environment. Finally, I want to go over the tools that I use. First and foremost, you need a digital scale, and it has to be able to measure to a tenth of a gram. The mix ratios of these resins have to be measured precisely, and they're not something that you can just eyeball, so you'll definitely need a scale. Thankfully, even just a cheap scale off of Amazon is more than sufficient here. The next two tools I'm going to talk about are sort of optional, depending on how deep into resin casting you want to get. The first is a vacuum degassing chamber, and the second is a pressure pot. So when I first started, I was able to make tires successfully without either of those, but I also had a lot more tires ruined by air bubbles. That's why I now have those tools and why I wouldn't be able to go back to making tires without them. But if you're just curious and want to dip your toes into the world of resin casting without a huge capital expenditure up front, they're not really needed right away. So that just about wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video where I cover mold design.